Now, at the end of this particular docking arm, there is a very strange thing. Absalom Station is not an overly large place, but it is a very densely packed place to be. Today, we're going to talk about the arms of Absalom. This is a single section of the space station. I'm going to tell you about the neighborhoods that are there, and I'm going to tell you some interesting places that you could have your adventures in Starfinder. Let's get into it. Hello everyone, welcome to the table. My name's Nathaniel. This is a channel where we discuss lore around some of your favorite role-playing games and mine. If that's something you're interested in, I would love to have you join me at the table. You can do so by hitting the subscribe button, the bell notification, so you can stay on top of my videos. If you're a fan of my work, then there is a Patreon where you can support me there. And if you just want to have a chat with me or anybody else who loves these games as much as you do, come check out our Discord server. The arms of Absalom refer to the large protrusions that come off of the space station. These would be the docks where you offload or onload goods, as well as get into the space station. And not all docks are created equal. Some force walled docks will have atmosphere in them so that us air breathers who, ne who need this necessity, we can stay alive. Other docks are just large open areas in space with no atmosphere. Uh, these are generally reserved for some of the larger space vessels and larger cargo coming into the station. There are even docks with complete water in them, whereas that is the atmosphere. Some species are only able to breathe in water and Absalom Station is able to accommodate them in these particular areas. And one dock in particular called the Puddle is where these water breathers would go. If you have some cargo that is more of a don't ask too many questions or I don't want too many questions asked about this, then you're probably gonna go to Little Akaton where you can pay the docking fees, get aboard the space station and nobody really rummages through your business, hopefully. No promises. Little Akaton is also one of the most crime-ridden docks in Absalom Station. No matter where your ship chooses to make berth when you come to Absalom Station, there is always something to do. These arms all have neighborhoods in them. They have shops, entertainment. Anybody who comes into the space station doesn't need to leave the arms. There is also a lot of residential areas that surround the arms and all of these businesses to keep them afloat. In some cases, you will even find quarantine centers from the Stardust Plague when that was when that was an issue. It was also so long ago that these stations are also pretty run down. Now there are three primary neighborhoods that you will find within the arms. One of them will be Fogtown. Fogtown is called this for obvious reasons. There is a multicolored gas that sort of hangs in the area so that the natives to Brithida or Leavara can breathe. This is the place where those particular species who need that gas for their atmosphere will stay. There are lodgings for them, there is places of business, taverns, anything that you might need in a functioning district, it will be in Fogtown. Now that doesn't mean if you don't breathe gas naturally that there isn't a place for you or there isn't the ability for you to come visit, there certainly is. There are communal breathing masks that are set aside for visitors who want to come in and whatever business dealings that they have. Large biotech companies from Bethita will come and set up shop here. They will push their wares and make their deals here. Being that Absalom is kind of the main hub for the Pact Worlds, it's easier to do your business dealings at Absalom than it is to go all the way to Bethita. And on Leavara, one of the primary exports that they have is their gas mining. They harvest their planet for money, for profit. So you will find a lot of representatives from these major gas mining corporations, these gas conglomerates, will come to Absalom and they'll stay in Fogtown to negotiate their contracts or negotiate their deals. Another complicated neighborhood when it comes to Absalom Station, especially in the arms, is Puddles. This is the section for water-breathing guests, as Absalom dignitaries might like to call them. Now the way this works is this section is basically completely flooded except for some clear glass tubes that run throughout the whole area. This is to accommodate the air breathers or the huffers as the water breathing people would call them. 
This particular neighborhood is known for two things. It is known for good food because it's an experience that you can't really get anywhere else. Despite the vastness and the largeness that is space, underwater is still the most terrifying foreign thing that you can experience. And apparently the food tastes really good too. The second thing that this area is known for is a company called Qualdeep. This particular company is known for their fantastic environmental suits, specifically for underwater environments, as well as augmented weapons for water combat, like in the water. If you're planning any sort of water fight or water-based combat, you will want to talk to somebody from Qualdeep to make sure that you are outfitted correctly. The last neighborhood to note is called the Vesk Quarter. It was essentially created as a political statement once the Vescarium and the Pact World stopped fighting each other. It was hoped that this particular area would lessen tensions between the two empires. I don't really think it has worked, but it hasn't made things worse, let's put it that way. So it's very common to find Vesk working throughout the Pact Worlds, working throughout Absalom. However, their highest concentration in the Pact Worlds is found in this district. And as with all things Vesk, it is very utilitarian, this entire neighborhood. It is quite rigid, quite structured, quite military-based, as is the Vesk Empire, which I've talked about up here, so if you're interested, check them out. This will bring us into the notable locations outside of the neighborhoods that can be found within the Arms of Absalom. I did talk about one of them in my previous Absalom video called the Click Clack Club, so I am going to be leaving that one out of this video. The Cos Monastery of the Empty Orbit is a training ground for Solarians. The architecture of this building is complex. It was designed by aliens. There's a lot of those in Starfinder though. And as in true Solarian fashion, there is only a thin force field that covers the building, protecting it from the vacuum and death and dismemberment, exploding heads of space for us huffers. This Solarian training facility is run by High Sola Tabashad Oseo Marcola. Now people have called it the greatest Solarian training facility that exists outside of Kasseth or the Adari, but really that only makes it third best and not the best in the universe. She also has her own private order called the Empty Orbit, and what they believe and what she believes very, very strongly is that Golarion's disappearance was related to the planet-scale engineering that they were figuring out was happening at the time. And it is her order's mission to stop any projects on such a grand scale wherever they come up. Because in the Solarian belief, it disrupts the balance of things, it disrupts the order of the universe. And because this order was disrupted, this is why she believes Galarian had disappeared. This other location that can be found within the arms is called Eyes Wide Agency. This is a private investigation firm. They're morally gray. They use traditional PI work by going out and doing the, the hard grind, asking the right questions. They also use mind readers and telepathy. They have solved missing persons cases. They are sometimes hired for corporate espionage. They are hireable for anything that you might need a psychic abilityed person for. Now the fact that this agency hasn't been shut down by the stewards or the, uh, or the Absalom police speaks volumes to the fact that they are deeply entrenched officially, unofficially, with politicians, CEOs, and even the same law enforcement, they go in and they help them out. So this is why they kind of get a blind eye turn to them. <laughs> Eyes wide agency, blind eye, I'm punny. Before we get into the far dock, which is the last interesting neighborhood that I'm going to cover about the arms in Absalom, if you're getting some value out of the video today, and you've really been enjoying it, let me know by hitting that like button. I would really appreciate it. One of the largest docking arms on Absalom Station is called Cavalassa's arm. Now at the end of this particular docking arm, there is a very strange thing. What would otherwise be a perfectly normal prime location for a, a loading bay or an unloading arm, there stands an interesting feature. There is a stone archway. It stands 20 feet tall. And if you are to look at this archway, it's difficult to focus on. You can't it never seems to be in focus, and it's not a problem with your eyes, it's just the way that it is. 
the glow coming from this archway is green. And there are two notable things with this archway. There are two giant statues to either side of this gateway. One is a lion looking thing and one is a serpent looking thing. I say looking things because they would resemble what you would have seen on Galorion, but they're not quite right. The other interesting thing, there's a lot of interesting things with this, but the other thing that happens when you approach this gate, these stone guardians, they, well, they stand up and they attack anybody who tries to get close. For the brave few that have managed to make it past these stone golems, the archway actually turns from green to purple and it explodes them into little meat chunks and sends them backwards. So nobody has really been able to see what's on the other side of the portal. It is actually quite, uh, quite well policed from Absalom because it saves money on the janitors so you don't have to sweep up the meat bits. <laughs> Sometimes from this gateway, there are runes that will come to the surface and then disappear. Sometimes the same, sometimes different. Nobody really knows what they mean yet. And research is very strictly controlled on this particular gate. Some conspiracy theories have been floated around about where this gate goes, what may have come out while no one was looking, or where it may go. But the truth is, nobody really knows. There are still other sections of Absalom that I need to cover and help you develop your own games and your own stories. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see. The Eye, the Ring, the Spike, or the Armada. Thank you so much to my patrons who have supported me and continue to support my work. Autumn Alchemist, Orbs McMillans, RRSPQ, Ducky, Vox, Cane Root, War Pony, Get of Math Rocks, BA Bravo, Arutvin, The First Layer, Bones Malone, Westheimer, and ain't no waifu. If you would like to get your name on that list, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. Up on the screen, I will have a Packed Worlds playlist for you, as well as a Viscarium playlist, so please check those out. My name's Nathaniel. This has been The Maple Table. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thanks for stopping by, everyone.